In this video, we're going to do a brief introduction into MATLAB's logic commands. So we're going to cover logic through uh, relational operators, arithmetic operators, and logical operators. We're going to do a series after that, but let's just go ahead and get started. So here we go. So I've already opened up a script. I'm going to go ahead and save it. We have all our naming conventions. So let's go ahead and call this MATLAB. We'll say logic intro. All right, so now we can get started. So let's go ahead and say, we're gonna start with a section. We'll type clear CLC. This is gonna be our logic intro. Let's go ahead and define a few variables. We'll say A equals seven. We'll say B equals uh, 37. We'll say W equals four. And we'll say, actually let's do uh, a few more things. That's not a W, that's an X. <laughs> and there we go. Uh, let's say we're gonna say, have a D and we're gonna have an F, except these are gonna equal things like hi and goodbye. Okay, so now I have five variables that I've saved. Let's go ahead and take a look at relational operators. So uh, this is relating one variable, actually let's just say two numbers. Let's say two numbers together. Let's go through and we'll do a second, Example, uh, third, fourth, but here we're gonna say one number, ah, still together. Oh, it's gonna be a long day, isn't it? It's fun to watch me type. Uh, relating one number with one variable. And here we'll say two variables together. Go. And then here we're gonna say two strings. Ay -ay -ay. Two strings together. All right really hard to do this in a docked fashion. I really don't know why. Um, so here we go. So two numbers together. So let's go ahead and say, uh, in this example, I have all of my variables saved up above. I can bring this down. We're gonna say uh, five is greater than eight, right? So naturally we know five is not greater than eight. Let's go ahead and run this section. And you will see that in the outcome we have, or in our command window, we have a logical variable with a value of zero that gets stored. So we've talked about logic before on paper. Logic in MATLAB works like this. If something is true, we save a one. If something is false, we save a zero. MATLAB's gonna automatically work this out. Now the deal is we can do more of this. So we can say seven is not equal to nine. We can say R10 and 99 equals. So this actually reads is 10 equal to 99. <clears throat> we want less than or greater than, we can say is four less than or equal to seven. We can say is 76 greater than or equal to four. So here are our relational operators. We've got less than, greater than, not equals, equals, less or greater than. Obviously less than works the same way. Now I can run this. Now here's the deal. In my command window, when I execute this, I get the outcome of all of those lines of code. I get a false, a true, a false, a true and a true. Over here though, I just have one answer. A and S equals one. So that's my true. Uh, it doesn't work for me. Okay, I gotta have, say, I, I need to store the, the results of all these. So let's say out underscore one equals, and then we'll copy that. We'll paste it all here, 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 and here. And we'll say out two, out three, out four, and out five. So now when I run this, in my command window, you can see the outcome of all of those logical assessments, right? I've got my first relation, my second, my third, and my fourth, and again, we're asking MATLAB, are these two things, uh, how are these two things related? Is five greater than eight? Because I have an equal sign and a greater than sign, I'm actually, before I move on to talk about the workspace, I'm gonna encapsulate all of the logic, which does constitute a Boolean expression. Remember, we talked about Boolean expressions as the combination of uh, logical operators, relational operators, and arithmetic operators. So here we go. So now I have all of my Boolean logic, it's combined, it's all inside of parentheses. These spaces are not important, but they do help when I'm teaching, it, it helps for clarity in reading. So for you to see it five is great, or is five greater than eight, uh, adding those spaces to just sort of stretch everything out gives you a little more room to provide the context for what it is that we're doing. But let's go ahead and rerun it. I get the same five outcomes. I can take a look over my workspace. You'll notice that we now have a, a shape that we've not encountered. So, so far we've encountered numeric arrays, which are saved as doubles. We've encountered character arrays, right? I talk, we've talked about in the past, there's a difference between the number seven and the character seven. This is a character array. It can so store one character or it can store an entire sentence or an entire book. Um, now we have a logical array. 
So adding to the cell array that we discussed in the input dialog, now we have our fourth type of symbol or array that is stored in the workspace, which is cool because let's talk about what we can do with these logicals. So now let's talk about relating one number and one variable. So let's go ahead and say out six and out seven. Uh, let's, I don't know. Um, it's not really important that we do a lot of these. Let's just go ahead and do a few. Now we're not gonna be using uh, just numbers. We're gonna say, look, is A, uh, or is A not equal to, I guess, eight? Okay, so that's gonna be our question. I'm leaving all of this unsuppressed so that it'll kick out to the command window. It's really not that important to do that because we can see it in the workspace, but I'm just gonna leave it unsuppressed nonetheless. And then we'll say, uh, is A greater than or equal to, I uh, will use B, we'll say 99. So we'll actually just replace that A with a B. There we go, we'll run this. And now I get out six and out seven. Because again, when we run this code, we clear, there's our workspace, CLC clears our command window. Now I have all seven of my logical outcomes. I can see they're true as a one or they're false as a zero. Now what can I do with that? Okay, so now let's relate two variables together. We can say out uh, underscore eight equals, out underscore nine equals, and we can take this exact code, a not equal to eight, we'll paste it in and we'll say is a not equal to b. And we'll say, all right, after I have is a not equal to b, we'll say is b uh, less than a. So now when I run this, we'll get our logical outcomes. They'll end up in our command window because we're unsuppressed again. We can see out eight and out nine are true and false respectively, and they also reside over here in my workspace. All right, cool. So this is basic introduction. So now let's talk about relating strings. So when we relate strings together, we can't actually look at, we can't just use the strings. Okay, so this isn't like we have here. So if I were to say out 10, all right, equals, and I can say is uh, D equal to I. All right, I'm gonna do this first because I want you to see what happens. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room here. I'm gonna zoom down or scroll down. All right, here we go. So out 10, out 10 is a logical array. It's a one by two, one by two logical array and it's true and true. Now here's what's happening. We're actually going character by character through the word. So let's not say hi, let's say, uh, I don't even know, he, that'll work. With he, I get a true and a false because D stores the word high. So is H equal to H? Yes. Is I equal to E? No. Now I have, excuse me, now I have a one by two, true and false. So this is pretty much what we're looking at here, okay? So this is an introduction. So in order to do all of these things, we have to use functions sometimes. And for a string comparison, we have to do the function. So I'm actually gonna come over here and I'm not gonna say D or is D equal to he, I'm gonna say D comma he because these parentheses are now gonna be the parentheses for a function. And inside of there, I'm gonna pass D and I'm gonna pass uh, he. The function is called string compare. So now I'm gonna say run out 10, are these two things equal? No, they're not. But I can copy this and paste it. And we'll call this outcome 11. And for outcome 11, we're gonna say is D equal to high. I run this and we get out 11 is true. So is high equal to he? No. Is high equal to high? Yes. So in order to relate strings together, we actually have to use the string comparison. So this is our basic introduction. We can do a whole lot more with this, right? I mean, we can say out 12, um, and that equals a string comparison between uh, D and F, which obviously we know isn't true because hi and goodbye don't mean the same thing. So now I get that out 12 is actually false. You can see that over here. Um, if you're doing this, it's usually a good idea to add, make it 01, 02, 03, 04, 05. 06, 07, here we go, 08 and 09. That way as we run, you'll see in your workspace, the results are saved in sequential order that we entered them into the command window. I'm sorry, into the variable or the, the program editor. But that basically concludes our introduction into logic. So next we're gonna cover things like uh, comparing arrays, saving certain values from arrays, and then also logic blocks, if end, if else end, and if else, if else end. So uh, I hope this, this uh, worked and you know, like always, till next time.